Hi folks, Dirk Bentley here. Being on the go is a big part of my life. I love seeing new places, meeting new people, and performing all over the world. For energy on the go, for me, it's five hour energy. It works fast, works long, and it tastes good. With zero sugar and four calories. Try it, it could work for your on the go life too. Five hour energy, energy on the go. For more information, visit fivehourenergy.com. Yo eres de todo lo El equipito ríete en familia con la insuperable Melimel Mel y Robert. ¿Y cuántas recetas tú has recuperado? Aparte de esta. Sí. No, ninguna, pero por alguna parte hay que empezar. Solo en cines, 20 de septiembre. Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 345. You are more powerful than you can ever know. Act accordingly. Anonymous. <laughs> Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Music Bed. As filmmakers, we're always looking for songs and music for our projects, but it's such a pain in the butt to license and go get music, and it's just been a nightmare. But Musicbed has changed all of that. You can download a single song, get unlimited music with a subscription, or even create a custom song or score from scratch. They already have over 20,000 songs, beautifully categorized, and their catalog is growing every single day. If you want to check it out, just go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Musicbed. And because you are Indie Film Hustle Tribe members, you get one month for free to try it out or 20% off a single song purchase. Just enter the promo code Indie Film Hustle. Today's show is also sponsored by Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve. And as many of you have known over the years, DaVinci Resolve is my preferred editing software. I edited my first two features on it. I've edited multi-million dollar shows for legendary pictures as well as Hulu and many other projects. It is a workhorse and amazing. It is the only 8K editing software that also has world-class color grading, visual effects, and audio post-production all in one software. And the best thing about it, you can download a copy of it for free. Or you can pay $2.99 to get the full studio package, which is a bargain. If you want to download it, just head over to blackmagicdesign.com. All right, guys. So today on the show, I'm going to be talking about and giving you guys an update on this distributor debacle of what's going on with distributor and, and this aggregator in general. I know a lot of you out there are with Distribber or have put your films up with Distribber over the years. They've been around for a while and they've been around for a long time. I also promoted them fairly heavily a few years ago because they did really good by me with my film, This Is Meg. As I stated in last week's episode, the company that I was promoting and the, the company that I was such a fan of is no longer there. The people that were there, that were my friends and people I knew, are gone now, and that company is not the same company that is working today, and I use the term working very loosely, as I'm going to uh, explain. I've been getting a ton of tweets, messages, instant messages, emails, uh, and even a few phone calls from friends and colleagues asking me what the hell is going on with the stripper. What's going on basically is that these poor filmmakers have been calling and trying to leave messages and trying to get emails, you know, responded to. And there has basically been just radio silence. It's been dead. No one has been hitting anybody back and everyone's pissed, lost, and they haven't been paid in months, uh, if not sometimes over a year. And there's just been a lot of just shady stuff going on. And I'm in the same boat as you guys are. I, was, I wasn't I was able to get a hold of anybody for a little while in regards to what was going on. You know, with my movie, This Is Meg, and some other films I was working on with uh, some other uh, consulting clients I was working with. And I was starting to get really upset. And I finally heard back from a, somebody there, uh, Michael, 
uh, that is a the president there. And basically, this is what the first level of up- updates that I've discovered. I've actually gone deeper into this than just this email, but I've been doing research and talking to different people uh, in and around the organization, finding out what truly is going on. So that's why I am here today. What I was told is basically... Uh, they, I, you know, I, I submitted a couple films to for my clients there, and it'd been months before I, I had heard anything back, and they, my movies were still not up on the platform, but they were still charging me uh, monthly, which was quite nice of them. And uh, they just basically said, listen, um, I'm sorry, but w- you should probably go with someone else now. And I'm like, what, what do you mean goes with someone else? Like, yeah, you should probably go with someone else because we're not uh, able to give you an exact date for when these films are going to go up. And I was just really perturbed, really angry. And I'm like, you guys have been charging me and this and that. And basically they said any refunds that you want or any words on payment, you will have to go to a a company that we have contracted uh, to help us reorganize our finances. I want you to let that seep in there for a second. So I was very angry at this, obviously, because I'm, you know, I've literally was thousands of dollars that I had already invested. Not to mention, this is Meg, which I haven't been paid for in probably a year of any residual payments that I'm owed by them. And I couldn't get anybody on the phone. No one. So after doing more and more research, this is what I've discovered. The distributor offices in LA are closed. Nobody is there. They have been gone from those offices for weeks, if not months. Another source that I talked to that's close to the situation basically told me that they have little money left in the company. Very little money left. And that's bad news for all of us who are owed money, refunds, or back payments. So if you are owed payments, a refund, or any kind of money, I have no idea if those will ever come. I can't tell you if they will or they won't. They're trying to reorganize and they're trying to fix this situation. This process, what, they, what they're going through is a result of extreme mismanagement at the highest levels of this company. It was a flawed business plan to begin with. And we'll talk a little bit more about business, the business plan of aggregators in general in a little bit. But this is extreme mis- corporate mismanagement. Just, just idiots running you know, the, the ship, basically. Doing the best they can, I guess given this, this, the, the scope of what the business plan that they laid out was, but it's just horrible mismanagement. Now, there are still a few people working for the company. There's a skeleton crew working remotely. So that's why every once in a while you will get an email back if you go to support, if you email support at distribber.com. But most of it's radio silence right now because they really don't have any answers for you guys. That's how bad this is. That is how bad this situation is, that the people who are working for the company at this point don't know what's going on, don't have any idea how this is going to end. And that is not good for us, the filmmakers who have put our movies in there. And this is not just a couple hundred movies. We're talking about thousands of titles that they've aggregated over the course of the last five, eight years, however long they've been around. They've been around for a while. So all of those films have been sitting there and they've been gathering money and taking payments in over those years and tracking all that information and paying out people out and reporting people out. You know, I want to talk a little bit about this whole, the whole business model of aggregators in general. When aggregators came out, it is, you know, it was spawn, it was kind of marketed as the oh, the the saviors of self-distribution and you can control it and kill the middleman and, and, you know, you go directly to the, to the platforms and you just pay a a fee up front and they'll put it up there for you. And then you can just, you know, get all the money back. And that did work 
a lot of times. You know, I've had many guests on the show like Range 15 and they did $3 million in, in sales off of iTunes and Amazon alone. And I had a lot of success with my movie, This Is Meg. You know, I got a Hulu deal through them and I was able to sell my film on all the major platforms and generated some nice revenue from my film. So the model did work, but the problem is, does that business model in general work for the company? You know, if you charge somebody an upfront fee and then you don't charge them ever again or take something very small on the back end as far as a, per a percentage of it. Because that, that was their big selling point was, oh, no, we don't take any money uh, off of this. You know, the money goes directly to you. We just pay, we just charge you this up one, one upfront fee. Then it changed to like, well, if you want to maintain it, you're going to have to pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks a year for us to just maintain your account open, which was fair and made sense. But even with that, the business model just didn't seem to work. You needed an immense amount of filmmakers coming in, more and more films coming in, paying those high upfront fees to keep the business running. And, and, and that's an unsustainable business model. So I, I don't know what the business models are for other aggregators out there. There are probably 10, 12 other aggregators out there, if not more or less, something like that. And I don't know what those business models are. But I want you to understand very clearly what you're getting into when you're doing an aggregator. There are things that are not talked about and not marketed about, which is this. One, once you put up your film on Amazon or iTunes through an aggregator, and you let's say you keep it there for three or four years, all the reviews, all the comments, all the, the ratings, all of that stuff is through this one uploading or one placement. If for whatever reason you want to pull that movie down off of those platforms to give it to a distributor or go with another aggregator or do something along those lines, you lose all your ratings. You lose all your reviews. So keep that in mind. That's something that a lot of filmmakers don't really realize. And, you know, how I don't know how feasible this is that you're going to put your film up on, an, on a platform through a company and then hope and pray that that company is going to be around for the next five or 10 years or 20 years or whatever the, the lifespan of your movie is. You know, this is, this is a larger conversation for maybe another time, but you know, you're essentially trusting that a company is going to pay you what you're owed. And that goes for distributors as well. When you sign a deal with a distributor, you are trusting a stranger with your baby, basically, and you're trusting that they're going to do good by you. And are there really good distributors out there who are honest and really moral and, they, and they, they really do care about filmmakers? Absolutely, there are. I know of a few of them myself. Are there a lot of them out there who are absolutely predatory and are literally out to rip you off? Oh my God, yes. Are aggregators now being tossed into that same bucket? Well, I don't know. You know, when you're sold the idea of putting your movie up through an aggregator and you're going to spend $1,500 or $3,000 or more to get your film put up on those platforms, you need to ask yourself the question, am I going to even generate this much money through the platforms that I'm trying to upload? Like just on an ROI and return on investment, if I'm going to spend $3,000 to put my films up on these platforms, will these platforms even return my investment of just putting my movie up there, let alone trying to recoup money from your movie and your budget? These are questions you really need to ask yourself if you're going to go with an aggregator. I did a few, I'm going to put it in the, in the show notes, but I did an, uh, an episode a while ago in regards to self-distribution versus traditional distribution, the raw truth. And there we do discuss a lot of these issues and, and, and things to think about because the marketing for aggregators is fantastic. You know, it, it, it makes them look like the lesser of the two evils when working with a distributor because distributors and film distributors in general have such a horrible reputation and rightly so because there is a lot of crooks, a lot of thieves, a lot of snakes, a lot of sharks out in that world without question. But they position themselves as, 
oh, well, we're the option. If you still want to get up on iTunes and Amazon, then we can do it for you. And the bottom line is, the truth is that you can put your movie up on Amazon by yourself as of right now. How long is that going to last? I don't know. But as of right now, you can upload directly to Amazon without having to deal with an aggregator at all. At all. And to be honest with you, iTunes, you know, as of, as of this recording, iTunes or Apple TV is a TVOD platform, is a transactional video on demand where you can rent or buy. The problem is most people nowadays aren't renting and buying digital movies. It's not what it was before. Ask yourself the question, when was the last time you rented a movie? When was the last time you bought a movie digitally? And if you bought one, how many do you buy a month or rent a month? You know, that's a question you have to ask yourself. Most people are just looking for it for free on Amazon Prime. Most people are looking for it for free on Netflix or Hulu or whatever streaming service they happen to have. This is something that aggregators aren't going to tell you. Do you really need to submit to iTunes? Would Amazon be enough? And should you go to SVOD or TVOD? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to give it away for free on Prime. But you know what? That's where the money is, guys. I hate to tell you. That's where a lot of the money is. So it all depends. It's a case-by-case basis. But I'm just kind of just kind of riffing here on you know, what you can do in general. So let's get back to the stripper, guys, and what we can do with this. If you're waiting for money, refunds, back payments, anything like that, as of right now, it doesn't look good, guys. I'm in the same boat as you are. I'm owed money as well. I'm actually owed thousands of dollars. So I feel you. Trust me, I feel you. But I think the minimum you should do is demand that your movie get removed from all those platforms ASAP. So if you do reach out to them and someone happens to get back to you, try to get your movie removed from all the platforms as soon as humanly possible. Because that way, at least you have the control back in your hands. Because I hate to tell you this, this is one little other secret that they don't tell you, is once that aggregator puts your movie up on Amazon, You can't put it up again through another company or distributor without Amazon pulling down or distributor pulling down the movie on their end because Amazon's not going to pull it down for you. They're they're not going to get involved. The aggregator has to pull the movie down first before you can re-upload it again. So basically, you're in limbo until distributor decides to pull your movie down. So I would demand you get your movie removed as soon as possible. That doesn't cost money. It costs them time. And hopefully they have some sort of manpower to be able to start pulling, pulling these things down. But you need to get your, your movie back from these guys. At this point, that is probably priority number one. Getting your money and all that stuff, that's going to be priority number two because it's going to take a lot longer for that to work out because they're just still reorganizing. They're still trying to figure it out. The company that they that they hired is still just trying to get their head wrapped around the crap that they have to deal with and all the mismanagement of this company. It's just This guy's this just sucks. It sucks for everybody and it pisses me off to, I can't even tell you... I, You know, am I concerned about my money? Yeah, but I'm just more concerned about all the thousands of independent filmmakers that trusted this company to do right by them. And they failed. They failed. Without question, they just failed. And it pisses me off because independent filmmakers are probably one of the more vulnerable groups out there, especially in this business. You know, they they get taken advantage of left and right. And this is just another lesson for all of us to learn. And look, guys, I've been in this business for 25 years. I've never heard of an aggregator going under. This is a brand new thing, let alone an aggregator as big as Distriber. So again, maybe they'll come back. I doubt it with all the bad press that they're going to get. I think that brand is pretty much dead. And at this point, it's just, you know, we're, we're trying to get whatever we can get. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, guys. I did. I, I spent a lot of yesterday and the day before just 
reaching out to my contacts and doing research and trying to figure out what the hell was going on. And as the information came in, I realized that I needed to do this podcast for all of you out there who are with Distriber, with an aggregator in general to really think and make sure everything's on the up and up and to to inform you guys of what's really going on. And guys, if you guys are with an aggregator and with any of the other ones, I'm not going to mention them, but if you're with any of the other aggregators, a couple of clues that you should really look into if this is happening to be aware of. If they're late on payments, if you've got to hound them to get paid, if you've got bad reporting or you can't get anybody on the phone or on uh, an email response in a prompt manner, these are all signs, bad signs that you really need to think about your relationship with this company. I want you guys to be protected. I want you guys to be safe with your movies. You know, there's, I, I'm, God, I'm just so pissed off about this. It, it, it just, it hits me to the core, man. I am really, really angry. If you want to get links to those episodes I talked about earlier and anything else I spoke about in this episode, head over to the show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 345. I really do hope that this episode has helped you guys. And if you are an ex-employee or somebody close to the situation and you have new information, please just hit me up. My email is ifhsubmissions at gmail.com. It'll get right to me. And let me know if you hear anything, and that goes for the tribe as well. If you hear any rumblings or you, you know, tell me what your experiences are. Like, hey, I got a, I got an email from this. They're telling me this or this or that. Let us know. I want the community to really be behind this. I want the community to, to help each other because, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys out there are feeling like you're alone on an island somewhere. And there's, if it wasn't for social media, you wouldn't have anyone to talk to about this. And I'm hoping that this will be a beacon of some sort of light of information and hope. And I'm also doing something else, guys. I'm going to create a Facebook group specifically for distributor complaints, uh, stories, anything that you guys can talk about and help each other out. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 345. In that group, we will discuss and update everybody about what's going on with Distriber. Keep the community updated. And please, I, I want the tribe to contribute to that, that group because I want as much information about this as possible. This is a serious thing, guys. We're talking about thousands of films and possibly tens of thousands of films and thousands of filmmakers who are going to be affected by this, by this horrible situation. You know, guys, I mean, this is this is one of the reasons why I opened up Film Entrepreneur. I really want to create other ways of making money with my films. I want filmmakers to start thinking about other ways of making money with their films. That is not this traditional BS. You know, this, this legacy film distribution model or dealing with aggregators and, and hoping that they're going to pay you at this point now. You're like, maybe they'll pay me, maybe they won't. Are they the lesser of the two evils between film distributors? I don't know at this point. But that's why I want to create other revenue streams from your film that you can actually create and control that is not dependent on a middleman. It's not dependent on somebody else, somebody else's goodwill to even just pay you if they feel like it. It's ridiculous. Oh, God. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just upset, guys. You can hear it in my voice. I just hope I can be of service to you guys and be service to the community and to filmmakers who maybe not even know who I am or have never heard of me but have a, deal, have a problem with Distriber. I hope this helps them as well. So I do ask you one thing to do. Please share, retweet, Send it to every filmmaker you know. Send this episode out to. Send it to everybody that you know that's a filmmaker so they are aware of this. And just so you know, guys, their website is still live and they apparently are still accepting films, which is, I can't even begin to, to talk about that. I mean, this is ridiculous. So please warn everybody you can to stay away from this company. And stay away from their website. And please, I ask you, if you can, anything you see regarding this problem, this emergency situation, please share any 
posts, podcasts, videos, anything I put up regarding this, share it with every filmmaker you know to make sure that nobody else gets taken by this company. And thanks for listening, guys. And, you know, we will get through this. You know, we will get through this. It, it sucks. Trust me, it sucks. But it's part of the shrapnel that we're going to have to take moving forward on this path called filmmaking. But we will do everything and we can to help each other and get through this together. All right, guys. Thanks again. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all stages or situations. Let's be honest. There are tons of ways to send money back home, and every company promises me the same things. Good rates and safe transfers. That's why it can be overwhelming to choose a new way to send money. I switched to Remitly because I can track my money every step of the way, which means I know exactly when my mom will get her money. And with their extensive payment network, my mom can receive her money in a way that is more convenient and safe for her. You should check it out. Go to Remitly.com or download their app to get started. Remitly Inc. is a licensed money transmitter by the state of New York, California, Massachusetts, and other states.